guys, what is up? It's me, Dunvol, and welcome back to another video here on the Accurate and Powerful LEGO Gun Series. So, here we are with our own flintlock style hanger. And given an overview about this, it is a single shot hanger, which has a functioning hammer, a fake barrel, in which you can insert fake gunpowder using the this gunpowder cup even has its own ramrod attached to the side of the gun very similar to a real flintlock so how does this gun work now first I'm going to show you how to load the gun first I'm going to take a rubber band and let's put our gunpowder in as well First thing you would do is you would pull the hammer to a half cock position. Then what you might do is you'll get your powder cup and pour it into the barrel. Now that part is of course optional. The next bit is loading the rubber band into the gun. Which you would load it onto a peg like such and hook it around the end of the barrel. Then what you would do is take your guide rod, again this part's optional, and ram down the barrel. Then what you will do is cock the gun fully, aim it, and then fire. So that is how this flintlock style pistol loads and fires. Now without further ado, it's time to do the range test. So here we are with the range test. I am going to shoot this flintlock pistol three times and then after we're going to see how far this gun can shoot. Test one. Test two. Test three. Now that was the range test. Now, without further ado, let's see how far this gun can shoot. Here we are with the results of the range test of this flintlock pistol, and to be honest, the distance isn't that bad. It's not too good, but it's not the worst we have seen in accurate and powerful LEGO guns. The, the smallest distance this gun has managed to shoot is around four meters with our second test. Coming in at 4.5 meters is our third and final test and traveling at a maximum of five meters is our first initial test of this gun. So I'd say the average travel is around four and a half meters and whilst compared to some of that guns it's not that good I'd have to say that it's pretty decent for our rubber band guns. Is this gun simple yet effective or is it only good because of its nostalgic look? We'll find that out soon but first allow me to go through the logistics of this gun. First, let's start off with the basics. This is a simple, single shot hammer action rubber band handgun that works like a flintlock and uses an optional gunpowder cup and ramrod. If you want to make the loading of your gun more sophisticated, then this is what you need to do. First, when you half cock, get your gunpowder cup 
and fill the gun up with gunpowder. Then load the rubber band into the gun. Then when you have loaded the rubber band into the gun, like so, what you need to do is get your ramrod and place it into the fake barrel. As if you were loading in a steel ball. Then, as per usual, half cock it and you're ready to fire. Once you are finished with using the ramrod and the gunpowder cup, you can place them back onto the gun with ease. With the ramrod, all you need to do is slot it through these two Lego pieces, like so, and make sure it's fully in, locked and secure in place. The gunpowder cup has a little Technic axle inside of it, therefore you can place it there on your gun with ease. And there you are. The entire gun is now kept as one. In actuality, loading this gun is pretty simple. All you need to do is half cock it, load in the rubber band, and then when you're ready to fire, pull back the hammer. Then just aim and fire. Like so. Similar to the real thing, when you release the trigger, this hammer strikes onto this part of the gun, like this. On a real flintlock, this would either be somewhere where you would load in more black gunpowder, or somewhere of which you would place a cap. The grip of the gun is more of a classical one rather than using Technic pins, however the grip in itself is still comfortable to use. The trigger is also closer to the grip, meaning that the trigger is easier to pull. Like so. The gun on the top is smoothing out, to ensure that the rubber band can fly out without touching any regular Lego studs. Sadly, however, not every part of this gun is good. The sights on this gun are pretty shit. They do not work well and it is just one rear sight. There is no front sight. The reason that is is because the rubber band needs to be able to fly out of the gun and if there's anything blocking the way, it may impede the performance. This is why the sights are not particularly good. Sadly, this gun isn't too sophisticated. What else can I say? It's pretty much a Lego flintlock. However, is it good with accuracy? It's time to find out. Without further ado, let's go on to the accuracy test. Can this gun hit those three targets? It's time to find out. Test one. Miss. Test two. Hit. Test number three. Hit. Two out of three hits. Soon it will be time to test the consistency of this gun with the precision test. But before we do so, allow me to show you how the mechanism of this gun works. The mechanism of this gun is very simple and very compact. It only features two internal components. The trigger and the gear. And on the outside it features one component, the hammer.
what you would do is you would load the attached hammer, pull it back, you'd load a rubber band on the gear piece, you'd twist it all the way back until the hammer is fully cocked, and you would release trigger. So it's pulled in, and then when you fire, the hammer would strike forward onto the Technic L rod. It is easy to add tension to the gun. All you need to do is wrap a rubber band around the Technic pin at the front of the gun and release it so that it wraps around the trigger as well. Then neaten it up a little so that it stays out of the way. When you pull the trigger of the gun, the rubber band will be released and the gun will fire. Now that I have demonstrated the mechanism of this gun, it is now time to go on to the precision test. So here we are with the precision test. We're going to see if this classic little flint lock can still be consistent. It's time to find out. Test number one. Pass. Test number two. Pass. Third and final test. All three pass. Now I've talked about some of the good things, we're going to go on to some of the bad things. The sights, awful, just shit. It's one piece sight. And the reason why is because the gun has to be smooth so that you will be able to fire around without issue. Another issue is we weren't able to get this internalised. I was planning to do this, never managed to get to do it. Luckily, the rubber band is out of the way. Won't really notice it too much. Another issue with the gun is the fact that, of course, not only is it single shot, but sometimes the actual mech can loosen. And when you fire around, what will generally tend to happen is the hammer will move backwards. This is totally unrealistic. Striking the thing, that's what's supposed to happen, but I've never seen a flintlock that would strike the hammer and then come all the way back up. Now, this is something that's not the best thing to happen to this gun, and you have definitely seen it within the video, or within the shooting montage. The hammer going down and immediately going back up. It's obvious I do not like that. I have an extreme issue with that. But sadly, I wasn't really able to do much with it. It was a gun using a basic gear mechanism. I've hardly used any mechanisms with a gear except for my miniature spy pistol. So I was quite surprised this worked as well as it did for me. Now, thank you very much for watching this video. If you like the video, give it a like. If you want to see more, click subscribe. And... Next time, we'll be showing you this lovely little pistol. Thank you for watching, and of course, keep on building.